And welcome everyone. So this is session two of day two of Big Blue Button World Conference 2021. I'm Jess Greenberg. I'm one of the moderators and organizers for the conference. And we're so excited to have all of you here. And it's my pleasure today to welcome Dominique Mondry. Uh, Dominique will be presenting on Big Blue Button at Scale, all-in-one portal solution for large-scale online learning scenarios. BBB at Scale aims to be an all-in-one portal for managing tenants, users, rooms, recordings, and BBB servers in order to provide a scalable solution for large-scale online learning scenarios. Um, Dominique is a software engineer, and he has multi-year experience in web development. He's worked as a developer, software engineer, and freelance software consultant, and he maintains and develops Big Blue Button at Scale. Welcome, Dominique. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um... Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Dominic, and um, welcome to my session. So uh, we will talk today about uh, BBB at scale or Big Blue Button at scale. Um, and um, I will present you the solution we we developed. Uh, talk a little bit a little bit about uh, possible users use usage scenarios, and um, show you some like we would call it hidden features um, which aren't. Uh, documented yet, but will come. So you see how you could adopt maybe a BBB at scale for your usage and scenarios. So um, quick words about me. Um, who am I? Um, like I said, uh, like uh, I'm Dominic Mondry, and um, I'm a software engineer at the University of Applied Science in, in Darmstadt. I'm from Germany, and I have a knack for uh, web development, doing that for the past uh, four to five years. And I'm currently in my last semester of my master's degree in computer science. Um, uh, for 27 years now, I'm really enthusiastic about computer science. Uh, since day one, I could think about, I really uh, always thought about computer science. And it's like the most interested, interesting field for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm also a maintainer at um, BBB at scale and um, a heavy BBB or big blue button user, um, nearly using it daily for meetings, for lectures, or just for having a chat with colleagues. And uh, last but not least, uh, I really love coding. So let's get into it. Um, a few words about BBB at scale. Um, Jess already introduced it. Um, so what is BBB at scale? Uh, we titled it as an all-in-one portal solution for larger uh, large scaling online uh, learning and teaching scenarios um and i and we decided uh, for a uh, option uh, that we want to represent it, our existing physical rooms into the virtual world so um we could have something like a adoption of our uh, current situation in, in 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 the in the in the virtual world with time scheduling we try to um, create a front end that is easy accessible for um, for for our teachers and students, and they can find their their online lectures and just um, find the right place to be at the right time. Um, also, uh, we offer uh, API. Um, it's the standard Big Blue Button API to connect different LMS systems or even different front ends to to the system. Uh, at the core, we use or reload balance um, BBB meetings uh, and also manage our room servers, recordings, meetings, tenants and users all in the platform. We offer uh, a support chat which uh, showed us or was really, really, uh, really useful for us in the, in the last year. Um, it's for time critical or we use it for time critical uh, requests. For example, my room is stuck or I cannot join the room or X, X, Y, Z. So uh, it was really handy for us to have this. And recently, uh, about two weeks ago, we added um, the tenant support. Um, so you have one deployment and you can um, host multiple tenants on this on this deployment and even have tenant specific authentication. I will come later to this point and show you show you how to set it up and um, possible uh, and show some possible or possibilities how to how to use it. Okay, so uh, maybe the question why we developed BBB at scale, uh, of course, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. 
that was like the core reason. Okay, now um, we had some some other reasons too, but that was the start of our uh, I say development journey. Um, and March 17, 2020, um, we realized that okay, the next semester because of COVID won't be a normal one, and we had to 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 switch to to remote uh, lectures. So we needed a solution around about uh, within a month. So our lecture started at April 20th, uh, 2020. Uh, it needed to be friendly use or user friendly for teachers and students. And uh, in Germany, uh, it had to be GDPR compliant. So GDPR, like the German GDPR uh, compliant. And uh, we wanted it scalable because, okay, Big Blue Button was one hour uh, first solutions we we took but we, we we saw okay it's hard to scale it and um, we needed a scalable solution for multiple thousands of users so we decided to 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 develop an own portal that will scale big blue button and we named it bbb at scale um of course it's open source um we released our first release at uh, June 19th, 2020, so around about a year ago. And um, we really believe in open source, uh, one for for uh, quality assurance um, and um, just giving back the community of BBB because BBB is open source. And we said, OK, we just want to give back to them and to you. So we open source as well. And around about one year later, we released our 3.0 uh, uh, version. Uh, on June 6th this year. And um, we are happy to, to, to add new features, to add the tenants, tenant support, and uh, do future, future, future development. OK, so that's enough about the history. But all this wouldn't be done by one person or isn't done by one person. So uh, we had a team. And, and on, at this point, I want to say thanks to, to the initial core team. Um, that was uh, the, the early days, so it was March, end of March last year. Uh, it was one of our funny hat days. Maybe you can spot me. I know uh, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, uh, hidden. Uh, I don't own a funny hat, so I decided to make a candy cosplay, and I'm in the purple hoodie. Um, but other than these people you see here, our community has grown. Um, we have a lot of contributors that contribute translations or contribute um, with issues, with bug reports, with feature requests. So uh, feel free and and uh, check out our, our repository. I will have a few links in the slides. So you will you will have the, the, the right link here later on. So uh, big thanks to these people and the community that I don't own pictures of and don't have the uh, consents to, to show them. So yes. Um, Maybe for these people who don't uh, already know BBB at scale, it's on a meta level how it works, right? It's not too deep now, so um, I will just uh, give a quick overview. If any client wants to create or join the meeting, yeah, it would be the same as if I want to, to join, for example, uh, with one Big Blue Button server. But now we have, for example, 60 or 70 Big Blue Button servers. So the client makes a request to our uh, uh, BBB at scale uh, deployment, which is then uh, which then um, looks for the appropriate server, makes a server request. Um, the server either responds in form of a direct response or webhook. And um, the and we as BBB at scale give the join meeting link back to the client. And after that, the whole session communication runs between uh, the client and Big Blue Button itself. And we just get notified if the meeting uh, when the meeting ended, so we can clean up afterwards. Um, to give this a little bit more uh, perspective, um, here's our maybe not the the recent one, but our. Um, our deployment at, at the university. So you can uh, see the clients are like here in the, in the, in the top right corner. Our BB at scale is, um, is, is deployed in OpenShift. Um, we have uh, many nodes and uh, HA Postgres. And um, we have different types of worker machines 
which are connected with a, a central storage uh, based on CFFS. And we have the BBB worker nodes, which are the nodes that the meetings are actually uh, held on. And we have a processing node, which is simply there for processing the recordings. Um, I will give uh, later a little bit more how we uh, manage the recordings because it's at the moment a little bit special, but we will change it in the near future. Um, more to that on the last slide or the second last slide where I will show uh, the roadmap for uh, until the end of the year. And we have uh, the playback notes, which are only there for uh, playing back the, 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 the recordings by Big Blue Button. So this is our example setup. Um, with this setup, we had, or since we, we are using it uh, since the first release, uh, we uh, had uh, different scenarios we used. So maybe you can find one of these scenarios suitable for you. And we just wrote them down. Uh, at the moment, we are like in the in the right corner in the mixed multi-tenant deployment. Um, I will start on the on the on the on the first uh, deployment scenario uh, which is uh, either a single tenant deployment or a multi-tenant deployment it doesn't differentiate that much um, it's uh, you, you can uh, authenticate your users uh, either by oidc or uh, or oidc provider or um, django or the django model backend and for example you don't want to use any other front ends and lms systems so you just want uh, BB at scale as your front end, and you can manage everything with it um, in this scenario. Uh, uh, second scenario would be you would only use the load balancing um, uh, feature of BB at scale. So you don't want to use the front end or the user management or I don't know what. Uh, it's possible too. So you can use it as a, a single load balancer. Um, you can still administrate your servers um, in, in, in BBB at scale and um, have just the overview what servers are running, what meetings are running on the servers, and have like a little uh, a base where you can access everything you need. And uh, obviously, you can um, uh, connect different front ends or and LMS systems since we exponent um, or um, we give you the, the, the big blue button API to connect to. And um, I will talk about this a little bit later because we don't uh, implement the full uh, API, yet, API yet, but it's one of the goals we have to do until the end of the year. And the third uh, uh, solution or deployment strategy uh, scenario uh, we talked recently about was a hybrid lecture deployment. So um, one part of this is already done. So we can represent our physical rooms with a time schedule. So you could have, um, for example, if you book the room or you have an event with an event schedule, you could just connect an event collector to the room and the, the upcoming meetings are displayed in the, in, the, in, the, in the table. I will show you where and um, how we did it. And um, the second feature uh, is not uh, released yet, but already implemented. It's uh, one-click access for lecture rooms. So, for example, you are in a room and just want to start a big blue button session. You just click on that. It's starting the room with everything you need. Your moderator, your camera will be connected, and and so on and so on. For us, we used uh, or we are uh, moving us in the in the in the in the last scenario uh, in the mixed multi-tenant deployment. So it's a combination of everything. Okay, it's. Um, we have uh, multiple tenants, which are either uh, via OIDC connected or uh, via the Django backend. We have tenants that only uses uh, uh, the load balancer functionality. Um, we have tenants that are not, uh, not, not authenticating directly through, for example, or other, um, authenticating from LDAP, Shibole, or OAuth 2. It's all within our Keycloak we use, and for the Keycloak communication, we use our OIDC provider. And um, we e even can share rooms between tenants. And like I said, we are working at the moment in a hybrid lecture uh, scenario, and um, we are using or we are testing it uh, here in, in, in our university. So let's get started in the, in the, in the, in the solution in the front end. So, um, 
like I already said, I know it's a little bit small, but I wanted to, to show you the whole picture. It's not important what exactly is written where. Um, if so, I will zoom in. So um, that's something a user would see if it's not if he's not locked in. Um, it's a table of our general rooms that are public, or even a, a tab for personal and home rooms that are set to public, so people can access them. For example, uh, our lectures. Um, use their home rooms as a personal meeting room and um, setting them to to public. So if they are, for example, online, every student can just access them and ask them questions. It's um, like an appointment, an open appointment they can they can come to. Um, in this table, you have two 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 columns um, with the current and the next occupancy. That's the event collection I, I talked about with for the schedules. You have the state of your room, if it's active, inactive, or uh, creating. You have how many participants are actually there and how the room is pre-configured. If you log in and, for example, have, have admin rights, you will see something like this. Um, in the top section, it's like most front ends, we, we, we give the option um, to create personal rooms and access their own home room and edit them, for example, um, making them public so they are shown on the front page, on the front page um, tables. Um, for locked in users, we have the support chat. So um, for, for, for time critical um, uh, requests, yes, you see a little bit more now as a, as a user, but this is a session for administrations, uh, administrators. So um, I would like to show you the, 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 the look if you are admin of this system. And um, I will now go through every single feature because most of them are just create, read, update, delete functions of, of the entities. And that's something you could explore or read about if you just uh, uh, deploy your own um, uh, instance of the portal. But uh, be sure you can manage nearly everything you, you see on, on or inside the, this, this, um, this picture. Um, one of the most important things I would say for us was the release 3.0 with the tenant support. And um, the tenant support or the tenant is represented by a name and a domain. The domain is this, what a tenant will be associated with. If, for example, I go on the um, domain rooms-staging.fbh.h minus da.de, um, I will have a different look and feel as for the Heconf domain. And I will have different um, authentication methods. So uh, either way, like I said, you can use the Django, Django um, model backend. If you don't have a central, uh, central application where you manage your users, or you could um, optional uh, add authentication parameters. It's an OIDC provider. And we use Keycloak, and with Keycloak, we were, we were able to um, authenticate via Shiboli, LDAP, uh, different OR2 methods, and obviously uh, local um, Keycloak users, which we don't really manage in our in, in BB at scale then. So if uh, we redeploy everything, uh, our users don't, don't, uh, don't get lost and still have access to the system. Okay, so um, how does the auth parameter look like? I know, it, again, it's a little bit small, and this time I will zoom in because um, everything on the left, it's like it's OIDC standard, right? Client ID, secret, authorization endpoints, token endpoints. That's something you will have to, to fill out. And um, things that you may or may not use, they are defaults or are not necessary. So you can um, um, you can you can uh, just choose how to customize that. But one thing is important because at this point we break the OIDC uh, standard, and it's the the last the last two two parameters. If you uncheck this point, you don't use the OIDC standard for uh, unique usernames. The standard is the or OIDC guarantees if you combine the um, subject or the sub and the issuer together, you will get a unique username. Um, and um, we said, okay, that's cool. We want to use this, but 
uh, we also want to have the ability, for example, for our solution, that we don't use this standard, just we, we as, as operators of the platform, we will um, make sure that, that uh, our users and the unique or the usernames in one tenant are unique. And we will use this claim that the user sends with our tenant and make it to a unique username. And with this, we can or we have to make sure that these are unique. So if you want to have different usernames and don't want to, to carry the, the key clock users within every iteration of key clock or something, you don't want to import export the users and have a LDAP or something else where the users are located, maybe you, you uh, want to explore this set setting. OK, uh, what claims are we expecting if you don't use Keycloak? Because uh, Keycloak sends most of them um, by default, or at least the, the, the bottom ones. Um, if you want to, to give your users some roles and some permissions, um, we expect a, a, a claim named groups, and it's an array. And in this, in this we expect following um, parameters, and um, these will be mapped in our, uh, in our application to grant you the, the the permissions to specific uh, specific features. For example, supporters are able to activate deactivate the support chat, to use the support chat, to answer messages, and so on and so on. Super user and stuff. Uh, you know what they do? They 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 do everything. And moderators are these people that are that can uh, start meetings and are uh, moderators in the big blue button sessions and so on. And um, for us, it's our uh, our teachers that that we have at the university and people that hold lectures and uh, different seminars. Um, the preferred username. Uh, if you never had uh, a deployment or you use the standard uh, OIDC username, you don't have to 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 give it to our application. But if you do, uh, and you don't use the OIDC standard for usernames, uh, that could be a solution how your username is uh, given to us or the, the username you, you use. And if you have a running uh, old uh, instance, for example, 2.15 uh, or something, you can pass this and users with this old username will be migrated into the new user with the new username and all resources attached to this user will be migrated as well. And uh, these are optional, but I would recommend to give a given name, family name, email, and name. Name is displayed or is saved as a display name. So uh, you may want you may want to 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 uh, pass them to us so we can we can show your users uh, correctly. Okay, so uh, let's go on. You already saw the the small window, the small support window. This would be look like if you're uh, a supporter and want to answer messages. You can enter a chat, you can search the chats, you can leave a chat, um, you can uh, choose a prepared messages, for example. Um, on the left side, you can uh, create pre uh, prepared messages. You have the, the, the settings about the support chat. You can activate or deactivate it. So yeah, um, let's go on. And uh, one of the most important things are the scheduling strategies. At the moment, the scheduling strategies are two entities which we will separate um, in the near future. Uh, on the one hand, uh, on the one hand side, they are scheduling strategies. On the other hand, uh, hand they are um, server pools or used as server pools. What does it mean? Servers and rooms are connected to the scheduling strategy. And um, this decides on which server or on which pool of servers the meeting will be created if you start this room. Um, these scheduling, scheduling strategies are important for every LMS integration. So you have something, um, you have the name which needs to be um, compliant within a, for a domain, within a URL. And you have the registration token, which represent, represents uh, the, the big blue button secret. And um, if you want to use them in the LMS, um, oh, sorry, uh, wrong slide. I will <laughs> have, have another slide after that. Um, you will have to, to use the domain. Um, I will show the full link in our hidden features because it's not documented well. And yeah, 
you can decide which tenant the, the scheduling strategy is, is is used for or is shown for and everything can be done in this in this in this panel um, for different scheduling strategies we already have that are free it's one it's um, least participants it's i would say the um the least work best working one so um it checks every server which is up and has the type um, worker attached to it and it chooses the server with the minimum current participant count which doesn't mean that much but hey it's 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 one thing to to schedule um, the second strategy is the least utilization. We calculate a utilization for every um, server, which is all, also up and from type work, worker. We calculate um, or we consider in our calculation the max video streams and max participants you set up for the server. You can say, okay, I have a bare metal installation and the bare metal installation can handle 100 webcams or 200 webcams and uh, thousands of users. And these numbers are considered in our calculation and um, um, obviously uh, as well that video streams are much more resource intensive than than than, than normal normal uh, audio users so everything together will give you a uh, utilization and um, from these servers with the min minimum minimal uh, utilization the first server is picked and um, we discovered a, a third uh, a scheduling strategy by accident because we had some issues with with the second one if uh, one server for example was faulty but he was the only server with the least uh, utilization uh, a meeting would always be scheduled on the server so we decided to to give a, a third option least utilization random pick which exactly does what it said it does so it calculates the least utilization for five servers and picks the five servers and from that he picks a random one. For example, if you uh, have a faulty server and the meeting doesn't start on the server, uh, your room would be get uh, reset and you can just create a new one and you probably won't get the same server again. Okay. Um, quick, quick, uh, quick look at our um, room configuration uh, tab. And the important part uh, here is the event collection configs. Um, you can set for each room, you can set an event collection. Um, the possible event collections or collectors we have implemented is a simple iCal collector, which you refer reference uh, with the strategy name simple iCal collector. And the keys are necessary, an iCal URL and the encoding. And you just pass as a, a, a JSON object in the or a, a, a dictionary in the database field like you saw here. I will zoom in a little bit so you can see it. You just pass it like this in there and the collector does everything automated. So um, the second one we implemented is for, for an ERP system used by German universities, uh, KISS and KISS iCal. And um, the strategy name is KISS ICA collector. And the keys you need is the KISS URL, KISS ID, and the KISS encoding. Uh, and the last one, but hopefully not the least one, is the uh, EWS, uh, Exchange Web Services um, collector. And the strategy name for this is the EWS collector. And the necessary keys are the EWS server, the EWS room email, the e uh, EWS user and the EWS password. If you need any other collectors, um, we implemented this with a strategy pattern. So um, in the folder in our repository, you will have a base uh, file and um, our free implementations of, of, of the uh, mentioned collectors. So feel free, implement the collector you need by yourself and make a uh, merge request and uh, we will have more collectors in the future okay and with these collectors you can actually um, collect the event schedule for a room or so on and uh, i think it should be the last slide about uh, the ui um, these are our, our room types which are um, basically the standard configuration for a room we set and this will be the default every room will uh, reset when the meeting was ended 
because not everyone wants, for example, um, recordings in a lecture room, but uh, people want, if they start a room, they can choose, okay, allow recordings, but the next one doesn't want to. So it's reset it to the default and he doesn't need to uncheck the recording or allow recording. So there's our room types. Ah, okay. And obviously we got a dark mode. Every good uh, tool needs a dark mode. Um, uh, so we also got one. Um, actually, when I made the slides, the next slide wasn't in. It's uh, we we uh, merged this yesterday on our main branch, but not uh, didn't release it yet. Something changed, so you don't have the theme panel in the in the left corner. Now, if you click on your on your name and the icon, uh, which is uh, here in in in, uh, in in white, you have like the user settings where you can choose the theme you would would like to use and several options, which are user-specific BBB options, which uh, we now implemented. Uh, maybe not every uh, option, we are still uh, developing it or implementing it, but something like, um, for example, you can skip the skip the audio check or um, you can, you can, uh, you can uh, allow for yourself if your video should be recorded or not. So yeah, that's something that is uh, pretty new. I think we, Emerged yesterday uh, in the evening, so the slide just sl slide it in, and um, yeah. So let's come to the hidden feature part. Uh, I teased a little bit uh, in before, and um, let's start. Okay, our apologize. We are not the best in documenting stuff, and it's a high priority for us. So our documentation is currently under construction. So. If something is uh, new to you and you still uh, and you um, uh, already used BBB at scale, sorry, I know we are working on the documentation and we will uh, do it better in the in the future. So let's get started with our hidden features. So the LMS integration, like I said, um, it's based on the scheduling strategy. So a scheduling strategy is needed. The URL for this would be something similar to the URLs um, if you. Uh, for example, use Moodle and the Big Blue Button um, plugin. Um, something like this should uh, already be familiar. It's your domain. Then you have to add our part with slash core, then the name of your scheduling strategy and um, Big Blue Button slash API. And the shared secret for the BBB server would be the registration token of this uh, scheduling strategy. And with this, you can use, for example, Moodle with our or the Moodle plugin for Big Blue Button for our um, for our solution. Uh, it's always it's all also working. For example, with some different uh, front ends. For example, Greenlight or something. Um, yes, we don't offer the full API. I think around about seventy percent are implemented. Uh, everything what is about recordings we still miss, and we will uh, we will get into that in the near future. Then recordings, yes, we manage recordings. And for that, we have a GitLab uh, group, BBB at scale. And you can uh, look at the repository BBB to MP4. And um, that's how we uh, manage at the moment our recordings. I don't want to get too deep into it because this will be rework very soon. Um, it will be my master thesis. And so we will change the recording handling and orchestration from the ground later or in the next slides, uh, I will talk a little bit about it. Then the agent, the agent is used for uh, automated registration at the moment, but will be extended soon. So if you want to, to register your, 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 your servers automated uh, in BBB at scale, you could check out this repository. It's not documented yet. So be aware you have to read uh, the code because everything is documented if you can read the code. So um, feel free. <laughs> Um, I would consider this as a hidden feature because um, you can always see if something is tested because we have automated build, test, and QA um, stages, and these will be um, extended uh, also in the near future. And um, if you want to contribute, uh, we have a commit guideline and uh, um, automated style checks, which are represented in the in the in the in the pipeline. And you can always uh, look uh, locally for, for these two. And we auto-generate our release notes and change logs for upcoming releases or for done releases. Um, the cron jobs are not really hidden, but um, we use them as a fallback. So I just wanted to, to, to 
to um, tell you that they are recommended to if you want to run a BBB at scale implementation, you should consider and it's this is truly in our uh, uh, getting started guide um, how to set these up. It's the collect server stats. It's a fallback to if the webhooks are not working and you want to collect what meetings are running on the servers and which are not. Um, then the housekeeping task, if something went wrong with uh, closing a meeting and it's not running uh, anymore on the server, but BBB at scale thinks it's running, uh, it's still running. Um, that's this task for and reset stuck rooms. I mentioned earlier, if a room is in the creating state and something went wrong with the network, or I don't know, the webhook got lost or something, and the server doesn't know that the meeting should be scheduled there, uh, reset stuck rooms resets the rooms periodically. Um, documentation I already mentioned. Um, RTMP streaming, yes, we implemented a solution um, that uses a, a, a open source solution with, 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 with the Docker streaming. So um, you can hand over a URL and um, a system D timer monitors the running meetings. And if a meeting has had a, a RTMP streaming URL, the Docker will start and connect to the meeting and stream the meeting to the given URL. If you're interested in this solution, this might be reworked uh, as well in the future. Uh, we will look uh, later on the roadmap and uh, but if you are or if you need the solution asap just uh, contact us and we will get in touch with you and provide you our 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 solution so the 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 second last one is webhooks so if you use the support chat it's the moment we use it like this you can uh, connect a webhook uh, notification um, for the support chat which will send you, for example, a notification, hey, there's a new message with this and this from this and this user in a uh, um, chat, in external chat tool. We use uh, uh, Matrix um, for that. And maybe this is not a hidden feature because you can look in the repository and you will see that we have um, ham charts. We ourselves deploy um, BB at scale with these ham charts. So um, feel free to deploy it too with Helm. Uh, we think it's a much suitable or more suitable um, uh, solution to deploy it scalable uh, than just run Docker containers. Okay, so I mentioned our roadmap. Um, we are now somewhere in the middle of the year and until the end of the year, uh, we want to implement these features or these, these things. Uh, some of them are already implemented. Uh, like I said, the, the, the user settings already on the main branch, right? Um, the recordings orchestration, it's not yet uh, implemented, but will be one of the most important features in the, in the near future. Um, obviously, not only um, the orchestration, we want to manage the recording lifecycle inside of BB at scale just to have one entry point for the administrators and uh, know where is which recording on which server who's processing it and so on and so on for that um, we will extend our, uh, our 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 agent and um we'll do it through 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 this agent implementation obviously bbb rp um is not fully implemented and exposed yet so this is one of our major achievements uh, which we will do until the end of the year um with the recording orchestration, the server orchestration is uh, just as important as uh, uh, orchestrating the, 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 the recording. So it goes hand in hand. Um, we want to, to improve our scheduling. So uh, first of all, we want to separate scheduling strategies from server pools. And uh, then we want to create some failover scenarios and give the community the option for example, to implement their own strategies um, like we did with the event collectors. Um, streaming, so uh, we said we have a streaming solution that's working for us, um, but maybe um, there are different solutions that uh, do not use systemd for monitoring. So um, there are there's even a solution that is written in Django or in Python uh, with Django. So uh, we want to integrate them into, into, into the portal. Um, the complete testing strategy, 
Okay, um, I think that's obvious. So you don't have to think about, oh, is this breaking change and will uh, kill everything I, I, I done to the system. You will have uh, front end UA, uh, UA smoke, low tests, and everything automated as possible, as far as possible. Um, pre upload your presentations via post, uh, post request uh, when you create a BBB meeting. Um, that's not supported yet, but will come. Also, we want to extend our tenants um, as we have them now. So, for example, specific statistics and analytics for tenants, um, extended settings, for example, for sharing resources, or uh, if you want to be fined or not fined, or um, if you want to, to be able to share your room with a other tenant or uh, receive such a, such a room from another tenant. Um, so uh, extend the settings for each tenant. And obviously, own look and feel. Um, you can customize the, the logo, the favicon, and so on. But you could um, have a much more easier solution to change the theme of the website for each tenant. So that will come as well. And last but not least, uh, import data. Um, migrations i would say um, for example if you want to switch from another tool and you say okay i have already 200 rooms 300 rooms and um, 200 users in my in my in my solution um yeah that's that's two and documentation of course um that's something we want to do so as well okay so with this i'm at the end and i'm uh, up for your questions uh, sorry i just uh, Talk a little bit too too much. So, um, yeah. If there are any 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 questions, immediate questions. Uh. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dominic. Um, let me get my webcam back on here. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much for that presentation. That was awesome. Um, I do want to let everyone know there is another session starting at twelve thirty. Uh, Fred Dixon put the link to that session in the chat. But uh, Dominic and I will stay here and we'll make sure that uh, people get their questions answered and you can feel free to stay in this room to the end of the session. And uh, just so everyone knows, these sessions are being recorded and at the end of the week, uh, we will be sending out the links to all of the recordings. So with that being said, um, it looks like we have lots of really great questions in the chat. Uh, one of them that I see is how many big blue button servers can you handle? Good question. Um, we didn't test a, a real limit yet. Um, at the moment, we are handling around uh, 100 for us. Um, with the orchestration or with the change to the to the um, to the big blue button agent, this number could go uh, much higher. And uh, because we don't uh, rely on a on a Pull, uh, pull method to get the server stats and everything, just the push method that the servers are, uh, are, are in charge of getting us the informations we need. And if they don't reply, we just drop them. So um, with that, you could uh, manage much more servers than, than oh, as over 100. That's like our, our feeling, but a definite answer I could can cannot give you now. Okay. Uh, another question says, do you have a solution to adapt the number of started BBB servers to the participants load? Uh, I don't really know what he means with that. Started BBB server. Okay, well, you know what? Which I think this ties into the next question um, from Mike, yeah. which says, could a contact email for BBB at scale be posted in the chat? Yes. Yes, okay, yes. great. So if you have a question um, that Dominic uh, didn't exactly know how to answer today, feel free to yes. send an email. I will send it. Wait. Copy. Oh, that's our uh, general mail, and you can just write a question there, and we will answer or uh, make an issue at the GitLab. Awesome. Um, so let's see, a question from Wade is, could this be used in front of Blindside's hosted big blue button to manage tenants? Uh, 
technically yes <laughs> okay um, I, I i i i would need to to look in uh, how they manage them uh, or how they um what they what service they have but that would be possible yes uh, you just write in the service there you you want to use and you can manage the tenants with that so yes technically yes okay um here's a question from mark hilton is your RTMP streaming solution embedded inside the big blue button room, or does it reside outside the room? Uh, for that, I, I I would like to to ask Sergio, who's in the chat. I think it's outside the room, uh, or no, it's inside the room. It's a user that's dial in, or it's it's locked in into the into the um, room and just streams the room to the RT, R, RTMP stream. So yes, I think. But they are writing, so uh, if yeah. he wants a, a, a detailed answer, Sergio, who's, uh, who managed the streaming part, will uh, write a detailed answer in the chat. OK, um, here's a question from Patricia. How many yes. servers would AISK need? We are a very small school, 300 students, 75 teachers. How many concurrent uh, meetings you have? will all be like uh, 10 times 30 students or so it's concurrent 300 students right with it looks like yes okay okay uh, I would say like in my in my uh, what, what what or in our exp experience one to two servers yeah I said just wrote it already uh, one to if it's possible two servers and uh, that would work okay it's our experience and thanks Sergio for hopping in the chat there um one other question i see from daniel is does it yes. support phone dial-in um no uh, we didn't test it we we gave we give the opportunity to to use it i know that one of the um uh, adopters or the the, the users uh, of bbb at scale that host their own solution with it um ask for this specific um field and they have a solution for phone dial-in uh, we didn't. We we don't support any uh, uh, di phone dial in and don't say yeah it works with our solution because we didn't test test it yet. Okay, um, I I'm not sure if you can answer this question or not, but I see another question that asks how does this uh, load balancing compare to Scalelight? Um, I don't know how Scalelight does it now. Um, I know that back then they used the least participants. Um, that's what we looked at one year ago, but more I cannot tell you because I'm, I'm not into the Scalite solution. Okay. Um, we have a kind of comment from Dimitri who says, please release the Helm charts soon. They are already released. Okay, there you go, Dimitri. Um, and then I see another question at the bottom of the chat that says, what do you mean by orchestrator? Oh, maybe he meant uh, orchestration, right? The, the recordings in the service. So for recordings uh, orchestration, uh, we thought about um, managing the whole life cycle. Where is the, where is the recording? Who's, who's processing it? When is it finished? Where to put it on? When to get it uh, to playback? Which playback server, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and for servers, um, ah, okay, you mean server orchestration, okay, and for servers, um, yeah, it's 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 a good question because we didn't define it yet in detail, but um, we want you to have the ability to manage every important task we would do on the machine within BBVSK. That's something I think um, would describe it uh, as detailed as possible because we don't uh, discuss it in every detail yet. Okay, um, fantastic. Um, I think Sergio's uh, typing in the chat, so I'll let them finish uh, that up. Oh, we have one more question that came in. How does it avoid single point of failure? Can you deploy two big blue button at scale servers like a two green light plus scale light solution? Um, we currently run, I think it's 24 pods of, of our uh, front end. And um, they are auto scaled to, I think, 80 pods on load. So 
if one pod just uh, dies, you can just uh, run another. If you do it with Docker, you will have to manage it by your own. But uh, for example, OpenShift does it for you. OK. Um, fantastic. And it looks like Sergio answered Daniel's question. Um, we will change soon your phone system and change to VOIP and also allow VOIP dial-in. Yes. Cool. OK. Thank you all uh, so much for joining today. Thank you once again, Dominic. That was an incredible presentation. I have to thank uh, you. Thank you. Yes, of course. I learned a lot. I'm sure everybody else did as well. And I'm just pasting in the chat the link to session three for today, uh, which is starting. It's already started uh, a few moments ago. And that presentation is from Daniel Mulkinton. We'll be talking about how he scaled Big Blue Button for schools in lockdown in Germany. Uh, so thank you, everyone, again, and have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.